Okay, so I guess I should start. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ankur. Uh, for those who don't know me, I work at the system management team at SUSE, which everyone calls the Just Team. Um, I'm here to present you the, the, the future evolution of our beloved uh, installer Just. So I will start with a, a overview of what Agama uh, will be, or currently is already starting to be. And then uh, we will have a brief look of its architecture, its software architecture, because actually understanding that structure is kind of important to, to also get some uh, other aspects. And then uh, I will jump directly to a live demo. Uh, first, for all of you to, to see what Agama can already do nowadays, and also because while well, having a live demo also adds a, a sense of danger and risk to any presentation, so it's nice. And while the installation continues uh, in the background, I will go back to present some other important topics. So, first of all, uh, what, what is Agama? So, well, it, first of all, is the artist previously known as the installer. So we changed the name, but it's, it's the same thing. And it's, well, a Linux installer, which in principle you, is basically an application that takes uh, that prepares uh, your system and then grabs a Linux distribution from somewhere, usually from a set of repositories that may be local or, or remote. Basically, put that Linux distribution into your system and uh, configures all the aspects that are needed to make sure that in subsequent reboots, uh, well, you will boot into that new system. As you know, for OpenSUSE, that means just or auto just. And other distributions use other installers like Anaconda in Fedora and Red Hat World or Calamares, which is a multi distribution installer. But the point I want to make about that is in all cases, all, all uh, those installers are just applications. And as applications, they need to run on some environment, which takes you to a nice paradox that to install Linux in your system, the first thing you need to know, you need to have is a running Linux in your system so you can actually execute the installer on top. In our case, in the case of OpenSUSE, that's the, what we call the installation images. That is a very small uh, live system that includes Just and all the tools that Just need to do the work. And of course, you need to boot that uh, installation system so you can then execute the installer. And for that, uh, typically in OpenSUSE, what we do is we have Linux RC, that is that screen that is behind me that you may have seen several times. That's, that's the face of Linux RC that takes care of booting, but not only booting. Linux RC also provides uh, very convenient uh, helpers, like for example, loading set RAM, pre-configuring the network, or deciding how do you want to, to run, the, to run the, the installer in graphical mode or in text mode and all that. Of course, you can also boot uh, from network using Pixie, so you skip Linux RC and you just load the kernel of the installation image and, and start from there. Or you can go even farther and use Iwana, which is a new system that uh, we are developing that uh, can uh, boot from the network or, or locally and then, and then have the ability to run containers. And then your installer will not run as an application anymore, but it will be an autonomous container, including not only the installer itself, but everything it needs to run. So if you are curious about and you want to know more about Iwana, there is a presentation from Andre, his main developer, this afternoon. So yes, I think if you're interested. So well, at this point, you may see that I'm, I'm digressing a lot, that I'm going off, out of topic, and it's true, I'm, I am. And not only because I wanted to advertise a bit that they won a presentation, but also because I wanted to make a clear point here that if you want to try a gamma nowadays, and is the, the, the method that I'm going to use in this presentation, your best option is to grab the live image we have created. Uh, but the user experience with that live image uh, is far from what you will get if you are installing OpenSUSE nowadays with the installation image and, and Linux RC and all that. And it's like that because that is not an installation image. It's just tumbleweed, 
the live tumble width that we have tweaked a bit. So it, uh, after booting, it runs a gamma and runs Firefox full screen, so you can control a gamma. But it's by no means something to replace the infrastructure we have now. It's not as small as installation images is. It's not as configurable and powerful like Linux RC is. And uh, we, the Just team, are focusing on, yeah, on the very right part of that schema. We are building a gamma, we are improving a gamma, but we will be grateful if someone can help us with the other part, which is making sure that is integrated into the proper installation media that is as small as possible, or that runs the browser only when needed, and things like that. So that being said, let's focus on a gamma, which is the topic of the presentation. And I already said that it's kind of an evolution of Just. So the question is uh, why we need an evolution of Just. What is wrong with Just? And, and the truth is that Just has served us well for more than 20 years. And, and I really mean it. There are current components in Just that are more than 20 years old. And I believe it will still serve us for quite some years to come. But the, the Linux world is not uh, like it used to be 20 years ago when we uh, created Just. Uh, back then, when we said a Linux system, you could be sure that you were referring to a physical machine with a physical CPU and a hard disk and all that. Now, it's uh, still the case sometimes, but um, it may also mean that it's a virtual machine. It may also mean that it's an instance on a cloud provider or things like that. And back then, when we were talking about remote administration or remote installation, we meant basically SSH or maybe VNC for the most modern ones. But nowadays, if you say remote, everybody expects a um, web interface that is responsive and they can use from their mobile phone and so on. Even, even the, the central concept of deploying a Linux operating system has changed a lot because the typical installation that I just described it is a still real scene that happens often, but we also have image deployments. In many cases, you don't install anymore. You just deploy a pre-built image in your system, or you even have a mechanisms to customize your image, and then you just deploy those images. Uh, so installation is just another way of getting Linux into your system. It's not the only way anymore. And on top of that, uh, we have well, all that usually when you start from, a, from, from such an image-based deployment, you have all the configuration done when the system is already running, not during installation. We used to, ha to tune the system to do all the configuration steps during the installation itself, one by one. And now what you usually have is a centralized system that detects that there is a new system that is not aligned to some res description, whatever, and then fix the system to have the proper configuration. And and so on and so on. For example, you have very different ways of uh, running software now. It's not only installing the package and running it natively, but sometimes you use containers, a snap, and what's not. So um, just is still great, but it's, it's a struggling to fit into this new world uh, and to integrate with all those new tools that we have in, in, in the Linux environment. So Agama is our answer to that. We say that Agama is a service-based installer because uh, it offers a Dbus interfa interface that others can interact with. But at the very core of the system is still Just. So when you're installing um, in a, a, a Linux operating system, uh, when you're installing the bootloader, for example, it's uh, quite a complex process. It depends on the architecture. It depends on several factors. It depends if you are using secure boot or not, which, by the way, secure boot means a different thing depending on the architecture. There are several technologies that are called secure boot, but are not the same technology, and you have to know the differences to, to make it work. Uh, and of course, when partitioning the disk, you have to know how much space to give to one partition or the other, which extra partitions do you need to ensure the system boots. Um, if you uh, use encryption, the different kinds of encryption, which encryption is supported by each bootloader to make sure you distribute the space, and so on and so on. So all that is a lot of knowledge that is already implemented in Just, and we don't want to lose it. Because uh, 
we are proud of just actually being the most powerful installer and, and, and the installer that can actually work in all kinds of environments and all we find the right way. And we don't want to lose that. But as I said, the idea is to export all that logic with a much high level uh, API through DBAS. Uh, so other components like external components like a configuration system, like SALT, like a SUSE manager or whatever, can interact through that high-level DBAS interface. And actually, when we are creating the, the user interface for Agama, we are also doing it through that DBAS interface. And we are developing, uh, in parallel, two interfaces. One is a modern web UI uh, that, well, we will see both uh, now in the demo. So one is a modern web UI uh, interface created uh, with React. And the other one is a command line. It's not in courses, so like, like just it's really like throwing commands. And both can be used in parallel. Actually, we will do it during the demo. Uh, and you can see that you can connect as many interfaces as you wish to device. And there is. Uh, the, also, another part there in the diagram that says other libraries and tools. And, and it's there because, yes, we want to reuse Just. Yes, Just have some components that are amazing, but there are also some other components that has not aged that well. Think about, for example, configuring the keyword layout or the language and all that. It's something that in these 20 years has changed a lot. It used to be super complex. It used to be distribution specific. Now it's much simpler. Um, um, we have a lot of logic in just that we don't need anymore. So we having that clear cut line there in DBAS allow us also to little by little replace those um, just components that are not that maintainable anymore and that we want to evolve. So enough talking. Let's see the demo. So. This is uh, what you get when you run that uh, live CD that I mentioned that runs Agama as a, as a demo. Uh, once again, it is not meant to be the final installation media to replace what we have. And we are not creating that uh, replacement. We are, I'm looking to you all to think about it. So what you guys is this, this uh, web interface. So the first thing you can see here is that you can select which product to install, because Agama is a multi-product uh, installer, as just is. Uh, normally, in OpenSUSE, we, we just have the lib image or the, or the um, uh, tumble with image that comes with just one product. But actually, for example, in, in, for SUSE products, we have just one media, and the very first screen in the installer is similar to this and allows you to select which, which one do you want to install. So in this demo, it's, it's working the same way. Uh, it grabs everything from the network, so I hope it will work in, in the presentation, uh, that the network behaves. And actually, this is the latest ISO from our build system that I have not ever tried. So. I'm trusting our procedures to create working ISOs, and I will, if something goes wrong, we will see the live. Um, also, uh, uh, to show you the other interface, I open here, or not here, but let me click here, um, just like an X term, so we can do both at the same time, and you can see how both interact with the other. So let's start by selecting one of the prototypes of the future SUSE Alp. And that takes you to the next screen, which is one step. Uh, uh, in contrast to, to Jazz, that takes you through a long wizard. We have here the summary with everything that is going to happen. And then you could perfectly just click Install here, which especially didn't work because you have still not defined a user or a, or a password for root or nothing like that. So you cannot proceed, but in theory, the formosis that the installer can already guess, it guessed, you, guessed it for you, and you can just go ahead. So, but I don't really want to install Al Micro, I want to install Tumbleweed, so I can go back to the previous screen and change the product, but I can also do it by using the command line interface just to show off a bit. So, for example, I could do something like this a gamma config set, and I want to say software dot product equals tumbleweed, and this will connect to the device interface and tell we want to change the product, and it 
happens, and so the web interface reloads everything because uh, we are listening bidirectional to all the events. So not now it changed to Tumbleweed and is connecting to the repositories if they are reachable and calculating the proposal and so on. Um, I, I expected that to take longer, actually, but whatever. So then we also have, I, I wanted to use the calculation time to show you this, but calculation time was faster. So we also have these cool diagnosis tools here. We even have an integrated terminal that I'm not using because it will be going back and forward all the time and it's not practical, not as practical as having an X term. So, okay, let's, in order to continue, fix the user's problem. So I could define the user here with the web interface, but again, let's do it a bit more interesting, and let's do it with the um, command line interface. So I'm going to create a user for me. So that will be like full name, anchor, user. I'm all, always only configuring aspects of the user here, but I could actually configure part of the user and, and storage and everything in the same call. It doesn't have to be about the same topic, but it's, it will be confusing for the demo. So. Let's configure all the aspects of the, of the user. And let's use the same password I use for all my accounts, which is tux123. OK. And now you see that the interface already refreshed and got the new user that I could, of course, edit here, because it's everything the same thing. It's just a Dbus interface talking to Yast and then exposing that to the two interfaces we are developing, and there could be more in the future. Okay, so enough of that. And let me put a password for root because otherwise we will not be able to log in at the end. <laughs> that that one is the same. And okay, so. You also have, yeah, what you will expect, network configuration. There is already configuration for Wi-Fi network, so you can just choose the network there. I'm not showing it because if I give the network adapter to the virtual machine, then I cannot do the presentation, but uh, trust me, it works. And um, as you can see, there is, you cannot click on software because so far we have not implemented any feature regarding software selection. Uh, because our main target for the time being is ALP, uh, the, the future family of operating systems that are being developed by uh, Atsuse. And in there, the, our goal is that when you install through a gamma, you get the very same result that if you just deploy a pre-built image. So uh, selecting a different set of software is something we are not interested in for the time being. If uh, let's say any open source distribution wants to adapt Agama, we can talk about adding more features in that regard. But for now, we are delaying that because we really want the, the, spirit, the, the final result to be just like uh, deploying the default image. So, okay, the other part that is kind of interesting is the storage part that is uh, actually using the same guided setup that you have in Just, uh, but uh, in a way that uh, we expect to be more self explanatory. So, for example, if, mm, this part is under heavy development. Uh, there is a lot of, of parts missing here yet. So, I attached three different disks to the system. So, first, let's, let's choose this one, uh, which is the one with Tumblr. So, I'm going to basically reinstall it. And here you see what it's going to try to create. It's going to try to create a better FS partition that at least that size and a swap partition. And here you have the list of actions. That is the very same that we have in Just, which admittedly is not exactly nice. But now we have a full web interface that if someone feels like could contribute with a better description of the, of the result. But as you can see, since I changed SDV here, it automatically recalculated everything. If I say I want LVN, it also recalculates everything, all the actions, and, uh, and tell me, tells me it's going to create a logical volume instead of a partition. Saying goes for encryption. I can put the, the very same password here. And, um, and again, so here uh, it says that it's going to create a partition of at least this. And you can see this auto thingy here. So if you click, it explains you. All that was logic that already existed in Just, that Just already used during the guided setup. But 
doesn't expose it, so it's not so clear what it's trying to do. Now we, are, we want to reuse all that power by explaining it better. So uh, it says already that the, if you change the configuration of snapshot, this size will change, which is actually the case because it's so big. The minimum is so big because you use a snapshot, so it needs to be bigger. And it, will, it may change also if you add a home. So let's try to do that and add a default home. And now it says that the uh, root will not grow beyond 22 gigabytes because it will try to give at least 10 gigabytes to, to home. And, well, and you see all the time now the list of actions have changed again and it will be home somewhere down there. Yes, it's here. Um, Oh, well, before leaving that screen, there's also this, in case you, have, you want to install on remote disk, you also have here all the technologies like iSCSI, Dust, in the change of in the, in the S390 mainframes, or we are working to add more like fiber channel over Ethernet and all that, so that already works as well. You can connect to a remote iSCSI target, and then you will see the disks in the previous screen, and so on. So, yeah, I think that's basically all you can do nowadays. And now I could start the installation again by clicking on the install button, or I could just do this, which is equivalent to clicking on the install button, so I can still drive also the different steps to the web interface. Let's see if it works. Yes. Okay. And now it's partitioning. At some point, it will start, start to install packages and report uh, the progress. And again, it's reporting the progress through the bus, and we are just catching that on the web interface, which means you could, with other, any other, let's say, Susan manager or whatever, also watch the process. You could also uh, watch for questions. If it finds any problem, it will raise a signal saying, I have a problem, what I should do, and you can decide what to do. So let's leave it working there a bit and go to some other parts that uh, we, I wanted to cover, like, for example, the unattended installation. Because, well, in, especially in, in enterprise environments, people usually don't use JAS interactively, but they use AutoJAST. If you have not done it, it's basically a system in which you, you, ha you give a profile to JAST or to AutoJAST describing how you want your system to look, and then it installs following that. Uh, so, just by the architecture of, of Agama, that comes kind of naturally to create something like that. Um, and in this case, uh, there is a clear advantage over AutoJAS is that um, in AutoJAS, not everything works exactly the, the same if you are using interactive mode or, or AutoJAS. Or in other words, in the JAS code, there are a lot of if AutoJAS do it like this, if interactive, do it like this, which is a bit different. And that's, that will not be the case with Agama. Uh, you are simply using the unattended mode to explain to the system what you want to do, but it will be always the same code. And you can use exactly the same approach that you use with AutoJAS. You give it a profile, describing how the system looks like, and it will install following that configuration. Uh, but we are changing some things in that regard. We are not using XML anymore. Yeah. And we are switching to JSON, actually to JSONnet, which is a superset of JSON that use, is used, I believe, also in Kubernetes and, and some other similar tools that uh, have some uh, uh, options to customize the profile. We will see it with an example now. And also, instead of providing a um, um, profile saying, how do you want the system to look like, you can simply provide an, a script like, like the commands we just we just saw that you can perform, so and probably with your own logic written in bus or whatever, and it will follow the same procedure that AutoJAST follows nowadays, or that it will Agama will follow with a with a profile. That is, it will fetch it, grab it, say, okay, it's a profile, so I have to do it. Oh, it's a script. Of, I have to execute it, and that's it. And last but not least, we actually have a proof of concept supporting AutoJAST profile, the old AutoJAST profiles, because we know there's a lot of work put into those profiles. Uh, we will never address 100% compatibility, but since we still have JAS under the hood, we still have the knowledge of how to execute those, those profiles. So uh, we want some limited backward compatibility, uh, including rules and classes, and including ERB, that are two features that are used to customize the profiles 
based uh, for every machine. So this is uh, the, the new AutoJust profile. This is how a profile for unattended installation looks in Agama. It's basically what I did on the web interface, but expressed in JSON. So yeah, you want to install App Server with a default user, with a super secure password, and you want to do it in, in SDA. But it usually happens that you don't know, for example, the name of the devices, and you need some calculations. That's what we have uh, those rules and classes and similar mechanisms in AutoJust. And by using JSONnet, that will now kind of come for free. Because with JSONnet, you can have, for example, instead of the device putting there the name, you can have your own function. And, and then that function, that, that one, for example, is just sorting by the disk by size and taking the first one. So okay, I have already been talking about the many of the benefits of why we are creating a gamma, how we, how we expect it to be the right evolution for Just. But let's, let's go over all of them just to recap a bit. Uh, first of all, is the most obvious one is the user interface that is much more modern and, and usable and all that that uh, the old one. And we are not restricted anymore to the to fit into something that can be rendered in n courses in 80 columns and 24 lines. And for remote installations, you don't rely on an SSH client or VNC client anymore, but you can really connect from anywhere where you have a browser. That is kind of ubiquitous nowadays. And of course, then we, we write on the wave of uh, web interfaces that are evolving a lot, that have uh, already built in support for things like accessibility and so on. So we can take uh, yeah, advantage of all that. The other part that I have been also mentioning many times is, is, is the integration, because since now offer um, interface not only to drive the installation, but also to get feedback from the installation to follow the progress and, and to to reply to, to act on any problem and so on, you could uh, actually, even if you miss the Encursus interface, you could build your own Encursus interface if you, if you miss it badly, or you can write whatever your own solution that you can do it by having some integration that actually use the, our command line to then talk to the bus, or you can talk to the bus directly if you wish. So the, the, the point here is that Agama doesn't care who is at the driving wheel. It will do whatever is, is, is told to do. So you can, as I said, build your own things. And of course, we are also doing this for the developers. Uh, as I said, uh, now we have a better way to refactor some parts without affecting the rest. We are also focusing on, on the parts of Jazz that are important for the installation, because as I said, at least for the time being, the idea is to not overdo. We already have all that ecosystem that we described of configuration tools that are multi-distro, that are well-maintained, that are evolving. So we will just stop stepping on, 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 on their area, and we will focus on what we are actually the best, in my opinion, that is installing. So that, that, that's also good for us. But it's not only good for us, the current uh, just Anagama developer, but also for all of you, because this will leave you out of excuses to contribute. Because, yeah, there is not, ah, yeah, but it's just, you know, it's leave UI, whatever mysterious thingy that you guys have been accumulating for 20 years, not anymore. So if you are into web development, we are using a standard tools for web development. The, the interface is done in React. Uh, as a standard, as something can be in JavaScript, but I would say pretty uh, wide adopted framework. Uh, we are using the pattern fly for, for, for the component, for the widgets, and so on, which is a system that is also used by Cockpit. We are actually even using the core of Cockpit to perform the authentication between the, the, the web server and, um, and the bus, because that's a problem that Cockpit already have solved. And again, we are just building a device interface. So in theory, uh, well, the barrier for contributions should be much lower now. So all of you asking for a better visualization of the partitioning or whatever, well, now you can help to make it real. So uh, as I show you, some things are already working, but this is still far from being a drop-in replacement for 
vanilla adjust, let's say. Uh, and since I said uh, we are working basically in the scope of ALP, so we are trying to follow more or less uh, schedules. And uh, so our next big milestone will be around June, July. And there are many things we are working on in, in the context of Agama. Some of them already work, actually. We already have support for power. So you can, use the, uh, you can download our live image. Again, that is only a demo image and not the proper installation one, but it, it works in x86, in ARM, in PowerPC, and in S390 mainframes. It works in all the architectures and is able to finish the installation properly on all architectures. We are uh, rewriting the localization service. As I said, it's the, uh, the just one is simply old and, and, and not worth anymore, so we are rewriting it and we are doing it in Rust because now we can even change the implementation language of some of the internals. Um, we are trying how, how well it works with Yast. We already have uh, Dust and ISCASI, but we are adding also uh, FCO and ZFCP, and, yeah, and things like that. And there are, of course, many more plans in the future, but this is definitely not written in a stone because it depends a lot of, of and, for example, of the open source community, if they, how much they are interested in Togama in, in adopting it or not, or, and for which distribution, and how much they can contribute on the areas that, that, is, that maybe are more relevant for open source and not that much for ALP, uh, for SUSE ALP. So, well, this is a, a, the, our general vision about the mid-term future, but it's definitely not, not written in stone. And uh, that's about the, the Agama future, but you may be wondering, okay, so, so you are abandoning Just, or what is the Just future? What, how did that? I don't like that Agama thing, I don't like that, don't like that web thingy. What happens to our beloved Just? Well, the reality is that uh, for the time being, Just and AutoJust are here to stay. Just because of the fact that they will remain being the only official installer for SLE 15 and for the SLE 15 line of products. Um, I would not say that SLE 15 is going to, support, is going to be supported for uh, this number of years because that, will, that could be taken as an statement. I'm, I'm by, no, by no way someone to do statements about the life cycles of SLE, but I can tell you that the SLE 15 line will be alive for years to come. It's not a product that we will drop support next year, nor the other, the other, the other, the other. So since we are committed to support just for SLE for many years, that means we are not abandoning it. It still could be used for uh, OpenSUSE as well. Although it's true that this, well, we are the same set of people uh, evolving just and evolving Agama. So, it, yeah, the, res the human resources are the ones that are. So somehow they, is, they are competing products. So uh, you may expect maybe just to uh, innovate less, because most innovation will actually likely be more mm, in the Agama side. But well, that's, that, that's how it is. Of course, you can contribute to either Just or Agama to help them keep moving at a very fast pace, both of them. And about adapting Agama for, or adopting, sorry, Agama in OpenSUSE, again, we are just developing an application, an installer. Uh, we are doing it, our main goal is ALP, the next generation of SUSE products that is, that is not meant as a replacement for SLE, but is actually tar targeting a completely different kind of scenarios, like scenarios like the one I described at the beginning. But still, we will always keep Agama working at least for Tumbleweed. We will make sure that Agama is a multi-distribution uh, installer, so it hopefully will be the official one for all ALP-based products, but it will always keep being able to install Tumbleweed, which I hope has happened already here, looks like. Uh, so we, as Agama developers, as the Justin, as SUSE, whatever, have no concrete plans about what OpenSUSE should do for Tumbleweed or for the next version of Leap. We will maintain just alive because we have to, 
and we will keep working on Agama because we want to. And then it's up to you to decide what to do. So let's, let's prove that this thing can actually install Tumbleweed by rebooting. So far it looks quite OK, to be honest. So now, if this will be a proper installation image, it will boot directly from the hard disk, but it doesn't, so I have to do this. So that's homework for you. Ah, OK, I selected. Uh, I hope I remember the key. Let's see if we get the Tumbleweed system with LBM and with encryption. OK, it's there. And it's also the other distributions in the bootloader, so. Oh, oh it's, it's, no, yeah, it's fine. OK, it looks like it worked. Uh, maybe I mistyped the root password, that could be. Yeah, I'm not sure which root password I. <laughs> oh, what did I do? What did I use? Yeah, I was just talking and not really paying attention to that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It seems to work and seems to have put the, link, the password correctly. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make it live to have some. So, okay, now it's your turn for questions, of course, and it's your turn in general for the future to, well, to everything I have said about contribution and all that. So. Yes, shoot. Let's let me be the first. All right. All right. So I got a serious question and a half serious question. So the serious question is um, so I know that the Anaconda folks have been going through the same effort, and you were talking about having the partitioning widget like not suck. Uh, I know that the Anaconda people have been also in the same kind of boat. Have you talked to each other maybe about figuring out maybe UI patterns or maybe building a shared widget library for these installery type things for, for in cockpit like interfaces? Because it sure seems like y'all are trying to address the same problem, leveraging different underlying backends, but having a shared front end seems like there's more opportunities to collaborate there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, actually, for supporting like, a, let's say, more complicated or esoteric partitioning setups where you have write and um, the better FS over several devices, or you you want a very specific LBN setup that is very different from the one that that this guided setup could create for you. We actually plan to rely. Well, we we don't have a fixed plan, but the idea is to offer. Uh, some like previous steps that you could do all that in the interface and then jump to the guided setup to do the fine tuning. Um, and for that previous step, it's a perfect reasonable option to just rely on or, or just to collaborate with the, with the Copic to just use their widgets or to, to simply yeah, do something in the middle. So it's, it's actually in the agenda because as you saw, there is. If you are using things like RAID and um, very advanced LBM and all that, it's still not there. But uh, we plan to definitely uh, get in touch with Copic and, and maybe reuse parts of it and, uh, or find a common way. Yeah. And the half serious question uh, you mentioned partially supporting AutoYast. How about also adding, throwing kickstarts into that pile? So, sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, so, for the Red Hat side of the house, our equivalent to uh, Autoyast is Kickstart. And so since Agama supports neither Autoyast nor Kickstart natively, but you're creating shims for Autoyast, the half serious question is how about a Kickstart shim as well? <laughs> well, we have not considered it. Uh, well, but we, we are not close to that possibility. That, that we, I mean, we, ha we don't have resources to do everything. Sure. Uh, architecture wise, it should be doable, but it's not in our roadmap. Sure. At all. I didn't expect it to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can <contribute>. Maybe. <laughs> That's never going to happen. Yeah, hello. 
I'm wondering, I'm more using Tumbleweed as a desktop, and I was wondering if there's plan, like in yesterday, like to auto install options to install like KD, GNOME, XFC, a graphical environment with X and Wayland. Stuff. Uh, if you want something more exciting than a TTY. Yeah, that, that in, in the just world, that's called a role. So there is a concept. So we have multi, multi, multiple products. But for each product, like for example, Tumblr, which is a product. And then for the Tumblr product, we have several roles that could be KD, text based, or transactional system, and so on. Uh, Support is still there, because as I said, this is just is at the core. So um, the concept of role is still there, but it's not exposing the device interface for now, because as I said, uh, we are focusing on other parts that are more relevant in the scope of ALP, because right now ALP is, our, is the only, let's say, real user of Agama. But if uh, there is a plan to, yeah, to put some effort to make Agama like first class citizen or, or, or sorry, Tumbleweed or, or even to switch to uh, Agama as the default installer for Tumbleweed, we could actually find the best way to expose that concept of roles uh, to the Divas interface and we could add it to the, to the software selection. And so, uh, we don't want to go further than that. So we don't want to, uh, to introduce things like uh, Installing individual packages that you can do now with Just. Uh, we really want to keep more things uh, simple and high level. But yeah, right. the concept is there. It could it could be out. No, no, no. Thanks for an answer. Uh, one question. My favorite installer was missing. Favorite OpenSUSE installer was missing on the slides completely. Self-install media, basically that we have. Uh, you know, it, it's very, it's one of, I would say it's the default one for anything micro related. Uh, so how do you see future of that in Alp? Like, I love it, it's awesome, it looks ugly, let's be honest. But it does the job, it installs everything under five minutes on my machine. I think it's cool. So are we dropping it? Do you see future for it? Will Agama replace it? Thank you. Mm. Uh, also, is it like Yast or is it more like Agama? It's, I think it's... It's separate, right? Like it's yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a separate project there. I don't know. But we plan to use it with help or not? Like the self-installed sort of type of installation. Uh, it's not uh, something we are planning okay, to do okay. currently. Yeah. Thank you. Who's next? Okay, so. Uh, if no more, even if there are more questions, we are actually kind of running out of time. So I guess it's if you need, if you have any other question, anything uh, you want to discuss, anything about Agama, of course, if you want to contribute to create the best installation media ever or to uh, improve uh, Agama interface, whatever, you can catch me during the whole conference. I will be around. So thanks.